Good morning, this is Sam Turner, and I welcome you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to this broadcast of the Sunday morning service from St. Paul's Lutheran Church in California, Missouri. We are pleased to have you worship with us on the sixth Sunday after Easter, May 14th, 2023. The congregation prepares itself for the worship of the as the organist, Twilight Duval, plays the prelude introduction to the opening hymn. The procession with the cross is carried by Faith Ashley, has entered the nave of the church. The outlight for today's worship is Sarah English, who is lighting the candles in the chancel of the church. Pastor Copper has entered the nave of the church with the procession. The broadcast of this worship service is underwritten with the contributions from our friends and congregation members. Our altar this morning is adorned with flowers provided by Wayne and Karen Hagemeyer in celebration of May birthdays of Mary Hagemeyer, by May 5th, Catalia Lewis, by May 25th, and Joseph Gish, May 30th. Also, in memory of Florence Inman, who celebrated her birthday in heaven, May 5th. The opening hymn for the worship service is Dear Christians, One and All Rejoice, located on page 556 in the Lutheran Service Book. Following the opening hymn, Pastor Copper will lead the congregation in today's worship service by offering the invocation, followed by the confession and absolution. Good morning. Welcome to St. Paul's Lutheran Church and a happy Mother's Day for all the mothers of St. Paul's and all the mothers of the world. And probably my mother, she is probably listening to us and watching us in Brazil. Happy Mother's Day, Mom, and happy Mother's Day to all the moms here. We also welcome all those who are following us on Facebook. Welcome to the sixth Sunday of Easter. Today is the 
Actually, the last Sunday of Easter, this coming, uh, this coming week, we celebrate Ascension, and then we go to Pentecost, and from Pentecost on, we celebrate the growing of the church. So welcome, everybody. God's blessings to you all as you worship with us. If you can, please stand so we can start worshiping today. We start today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly fixed in the heavens. I will never forget your precepts, for by them you have given me life. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Then let us confess our sins to God, our Father, seeking his forgiveness through our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Most uh, merciful God, receive the words of God. Our God hears our prayers and forgives our sins because of Jesus' perfect life, death, and resurrection. At the command of Christ and through the power of the cross, I forgive all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The word of God for us is, it comes from the Psalm 66. Praise our God, all peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard. Come and hear all of you who fear God. Let me tell you what he has done for me.
Let us pray. Ever-living God, in you we live and move and have our being. We praise and thank you for creating us in your image and for restoring our sin-stained selves so that image through the waters of baptism. Lead us and guide us by your Spirit as we live out our days through Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The elders David Ott and Ritz Sedgwick will now approach the lectern to lead us in the first reading from Acts 17, 16 through 31. Before the second reading from 1 Peter 3, 13 through 22, the choir will offer the anthem, This is the day the Lord has made. Pastor will then lead the congregation in reading the Holy Gospel from John 14, 15 through 21. And again, a happy Mother's Day and a special uh, welcome to those listening to us on KRLL Radio. Our first reading this morning from Acts chapter 17, verses 16 through 31. While Paul was waiting for them in Athens, he was greatly dis distressed to see that the city was full of idols. So he reasoned in the synagogue with both Jew and God-fearing Greeks, as well as in the marketplace day by day with those who happened to be there. A group of Epicureans and Stoic philosophers began to debate with him. Some of them asked, what is this babbler trying to say? Others remarked, he seems to be advocating foreign gods. They said this because Paul was preaching the good news about Jesus and the resurrection. Then they took him and brought him to a meeting of the Areopagus, where they said to him, May we know what this new teaching is that you are presenting. You are bringing some strange ideas to our ears, and we would like to know what they mean. All the Athens, Athenians and foreigners who lived there spent their time doing nothing but talking about and listening to the latest ideas. Paul then stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus and said, People of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious. For as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, To an unknown God. So you are ignorant of the very thing you worship. And this is what I'm going to proclaim to you. The God who made the world and in everything that is in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. From one man he made all the nations, that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. God did this so that they would see him, seek him, and perhaps reach out for him and find him, through, though he was not far from any of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by human design and skill. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
second reading today is from 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 13 through 22. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear their threats. Do not be frightened. But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. For it is better, if it is God's will, to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. For Christ, who, for Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. After being made alive, he went and made proclamation to the imprisoned spirits, to those who were disobedient long ago when God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built. In, in it, only a few people, eight in all, were saved through water, and this water symbolizes baptism that now saves you also. Not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a clear conscience toward God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at God's right hand with angels, authorities, and powers in submission to him. This is the word of the Lord. just want to make sure it's working because I have been using for a while. If you can, please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel is according to St. John, chapter 14, verses 15 to 21. If you love me, keep my commandments or my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as a orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you will also live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, and I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Congregation may be seated.
May the peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be with all of us. The sixth Sunday of Easter. Life for a moment or life eternal. This is what the gospel tells us today. I was visiting with uh, Don and Carol, young Meyer, this past Friday. My daughter wants to go see Oreo, the cat. That's uh, Carol's cat. Every time Alina passes by the house, she wants to see the cat. So I have to stop. And we stop to see Oreo, the cat. So as we were talking a little bit and visiting, so Carol shared, shared a story with me about this boy. And then I went to YouTube and I searched for the story. And it was a good story. A story of a boy who grabbed the steering wheel in a school bus of a school bus in Detroit, hit the brakes and saved about 60 children as the driver was having a, I don't know if a heart issue or something, but he was about to pass out. And so the boy jumped over there, he was just seven years old, jump and hit the brakes and save all the children. Now, open quotes. Someone call 911 right now, says the boy, the seventh grader named Dylan Reeves. Dylan was hailed as a hero. He stopped the bus as it was moving towards oncoming traffic. And so here's what the principal said, in my 35 plus years of education, this was an extraordinary act of courage and maturity from his part or on his part. Now, this is what interest, this is what it's very interesting in this whole story. Soon though, a question arose. How had Dylan, the boy, had been only or the only one to notice that the school driver was not driving or was about to pass out? The answer was simple. While all the kids had been on their cell phones listening to music or otherwise engrossed in their electronics, Dylan didn't have a cell phone to distract him from the world around him or limit his situational awareness. How about that? Be aware, <clears throat> excuse me, be careful with the many distractions of our time. This is what the gospel is all about today. We are actually talking about John 14 for a couple of weeks. And as I told you before, this reading has so much to tell us. And so today I am going to talk about those two lives that the Gospel of John is teaching us about. This is the last, this is the last Sunday of Easter. And like I said before, we are moving towards Ascension and then Pentecost. So Easter is going to be behind us. But, but not what Jesus promised to his disciples at the upper room. That is much Easter in our lives. At least we should have Easter every single day. We have Easter every single Sunday when we come to church. We celebrate Jesus' resurrection. We ponder on Jesus' death in our lives as Christians. We ask for forgiveness. And when we got out of this door, then we proclaim the good news of Christ. This is what the church is about. This is what the Word of God teaches all. Today we live behind the beautiful season of Easter. And we move forward with this feeling, with the lenses of the Good Friday in our hearts, with or through the lenses of that most wonderful day in history when Jesus rose from the dead. We move, we move forward 
with Jesus' promises that he made true for the disciples. Promises made in the upper room, John 14, when he said, I am going to the Father, and I am going to prepare a place for you. So throughout the gospel, the emphasis of John, the author of the gospel of John, of course, was to distinguish before or between those two lives. Besides emphasis on the divinity of Jesus, because some people were putting in doubt what Jesus really was, which is God. Even though he was human, he was also God. The whole Gospel of John wants to make this distinction. It wants to tell about those two lives. There is this biological life the, the Bible calls bios or bios. It gives us, is the root of the word for biological. So it's bios, it's life. It's the organic. It is the, the life we have, the temporal life we have. But John also, and most importantly, tells us about the other life in the Bible, which is Zoe. I have seen some girls named Zoe. I hope they know what it means to be called Zoe. <laughs> Zoe means eternal life. And so John plays with those two words, with bio and Zoe. And he reminds the disciples at the upper room what is the most important thing and how should you, should you see this Zoe life that Jesus promised and how not let the world distract you so much that you lose track or that you don't care anymore about the life that Jesus prepared for all of them starting in the upper room. We are here today, but we have no idea what's going to happen tomorrow. Our flesh ages daily, our biological or bio life. Today I might remember where the toolbox is, but tomorrow, who knows? Today we can easily say the names of our sons and daughters and grandsons and granddaughters, but tomorrow, I don't know. This is life. This is one of the lives that John is talking about. We are all subjected to time, sickness, and death. This is the way life is. Just read the obituaries. In any newspaper or online service, you will quickly realize that biological death can happen at any time to any person, regardless of age. In the last few weeks, I experienced something that I never had before in almost 30 years as a pastor. I never buried a wife and a husband only a week apart. And it happened about two weeks, this last two weeks. The family called me to do the funeral service for the wife, the mother. They all go home starting their morning process. And then on Sunday evening, I receive a call. And the man says, Pastor, my father died. The mother died on Wednesday, the father died on Sunday. And so they are buried in the last, this lapse of two weeks. Life is short. And death can happen at any time to anybody and so we hang into the other life. We, we talk and we think, and we make sure that we have that Zoe life present always in our daily prayers, in our daily lives. Like a mobile phone or, or any kind of gadget in a children's hand, we we cannot let the bio life take control and we cannot live as it is the only life we have. This is what John tells the disciples. Here is what the Apostle Paul tells his congregation in Corinth. 
But brothers and sisters, I want you to remind, I want to remind you of the gospel I preach to you. The gospel he preaches is the gospel of John, which you receive on and which you have taken your stand. By this gospel we are saved, and if you hold firmly to the word I preach to you, otherwise you have believed in vain. But it if, if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection, if there is no Zoe, then our preaching is useless. And so is your faith. This is what the Bible is about to remind us of, of what kind of life we should always, but always praise and thank God for. Not this life we have now only, but the life to come. The life promised for the disciples, to the disciples at the upper room. This life was given to us, and this is what we believe as good Lutherans. This life was given to us in our, on our baptisms. We, we die for our sins, and we just rose to the new reality of Zoe, of life that Christ gave us from the waters of baptism, because in those waters, God gave us new life. And new life means eternal life. It is important to constantly remind ourselves that while the physical rite of receiving the sacrament of holy baptism through water and the word takes place at a kind of particular time as a practical and a spiritual reality, our baptism is not to be considered a one-time thing. It is an ongoing event as in contrition and repentance and restoration, we are dying and rising with Jesus daily. It is also important to say that we cannot live our lives in this world, the biological life, to the point we want to enjoy so much just to forget about Jesus and the church. I often see, and this is a little You'd be funny if it was not so sad. I often see inactive members of our congregation in supermarkets and other places. And most of the time, the first thing they want to tell me is that they are too busy with their lives, with the bio lives. So they cannot come and be reminded of the Zoe life. We can let this life suppress us what Christ already gave us. Jesus said and warned the people in the Gospel of Luke. He said to another man, follow me. But he replied, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, let the dead bury the, their own dead. But you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. It's still another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Jesus replied, no one puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. This is a warning from Jesus. Don't give excuses. Worship. Be part of the body of Christ. You are baptized. You are important. God loves you. But it's kind of normal. It's kind of what we have to face every single day. If our eyes and our hearts are too set up upon this biological life, that there is no room for God, you might find that the, at the life's end, God doesn't have a room, much less a mansion, prepared for anybody who does not care about the Zoe life. 
If you love God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, strive to keep God's commandments. This is what the Bible is all about. This is why the, the bulletin has this beautiful picture about the Word, the Word, the Word. Because God's Word is the most important thing we have. So pray daily, worship weekly. Read and study God's Word. Serve within and beyond this congregation. Encourage your spiritual growth in yourself and also in others. This is the way we're going to inspire people, let people know that Zoe, it's more, more important than anything else. In fact, when God talked to the disciples in the upper room, he said, I am going to prepare a place for you. Right now, and right there, when they believe in Jesus, they already had the eternal life. We should not forget, and this is the last thing I want to say today, because my sermon is getting long, I know. But it's about eternal life, so I should speak a little longer. When the disciples received that word from Jesus in the upper room, and Jesus said, now you have a mansion in heaven. It was not because they deserve anything. It was because Jesus, no, he was going to the cross. He suffered and died for them. Jesus died and suffered on the cross for you. So you already have eternal life. The only thing we have to do now is to keep it being faithful to him and to his word. But if we can do an extra, if we can walk an extra mile, then we can not only know and worship God for it, we can proclaim and tell others about it. So the kingdom of God can grow and more people can have that beautiful mansion in heaven. In Jesus' name. Amen. The ushers come forward to receive the offering plates while the congregation sings the offertory, found on page 159 of our service book. Our worship bulletins can be found on the church website at www.stpaulslutheran1860.com. Under the bulletin board menu, St. Paul's Congregation offers you a daily devotional message on the telephone by calling 573-796-4754. A different message is recorded daily. Our live stream director is Jason Yarnmeyer. We also invite you to listen to the worldwide message of the Lutheran Hour broadcast on station KRLL at 7.30 a.m. each Sunday. Today's Lutheran Hour was the underwritten with the contributions. If your value are broadcast and would care to help support them, you may send your donations to St. Paul Lutheran Church, 207 North Owen Street, California, Missouri, 65018. We greatly appreciate your support. Each weekday morning at 6.15 a.m., the California Ministerial Alliance conducts a five-minute devotional program on KRLL. We invite you to begin your day with these messages. This week's devotion are offered by Deacon Bob Renick Meyer of Annunciation Catholic Church in California, Missouri.
Let us talk with God in prayer. O Lord, you bless and protect your people in a world where many false gods, known and unknown, are worshipped. Give your saints a clear and bold proclamation of Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Father in heaven, you have given us a mirror of your love and the vocation of mothers who nurture, guide, and raise their children in all things good. Bless them in their calling. Sustain them through weary and difficult times. Remember in compassion all who are barren and bring them comfort through the children of your church. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, send forth your spirit and work through us, your people, that the lonely, poor, and homeless may rejoice in your presence and power of love. Lord, in your mercy, Creator, grant good leaders in every land who will seek peace and service justice, frustrate the cause of evil, violence, and oppression. Lord, in your mercy, grant healing according to your will and sustain in faith those for whom we pray, especially pray for Clarice Alexander, Darlene Blight, Felicia Brown, Connie Cook, Mary Ann Clinton, Ralph Dudley, Gina Foster, June Friedmeier, Larry Gish, Marie Gench, Joe Green, Karen Hagmeyer, Ivis Hack, Ruth Higgins, Oliver Holtmeyer, Chris Youngmeyer, Delbert and Joyce Kaiser, Harold Kisling, Joy Kisling, Joyce Kisling, Carl Kister, June Kister, Ruth Meyer, Lucas Manley, Norma Jean Martin, Trevor Martin, Brad O'Neill, Michael Rex, Charlene Schnack, Eileen Sheriff, Sandy Taylor, John Turner, Diane Weekend, Bob Winkler, and Dolores Woods. Lord, in your mercy. Dear God, give mercy and peace of mind to our sister in Christ, Karen Hagmeyer, as she is crossing some tumultuous waters and facing some health difficulties in her life. Remind her of your love and care and give her peace of mind to face the unknown with faith and courage, trusting you will provide and be with her always. Heavenly Father, our times are in your hands. Look with favor on Mary Hagmeyer, Catalia Lewis, and Joseph Gish, as they celebrate or celebrated their birthdays in May, continue to give them your blessing and hold them in your everlasting love. Almighty God, creator of all that exists, we thank you this day for the birth of Lila Jean Hall. Please bless this baby, Lord. Place a shield of protection around uh, her little body and guard her as she grows. Be gracious to her, O Lord, and as well as Lila's parents, and bless them in Jesus' name. We pray all these things and whatever else you know that we need. Grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, let us prepare our hearts and minds to receive the body and blood of Jesus. So let's open the hymnal on page 208. Today we are using the liturgy number four, which is a little different, but we are still learning. 208, preparing our, to receive communion. If you can, please stand so we can begin. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right and salutary, that we should all times and in all place give thanks to you, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings 
you so freely bestow on us and in all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we loud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Let us pray together the prayer our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. In heaven, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Same way, he also took the cup after supper. And after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my body, which is given for you for the forgiveness of your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
close today's worship service, the congregation will sing, Lord, keep us steadfast in your word, which is on page 461 of our hymnal. You're listening to the Sunday morning divine worship service from St. Paul's Lutheran Church in California, Missouri. It has been our pleasure to have you worship with the members of St. Paul's Lutheran Church through the facilities of KRLL Radio. May God's holy angels watch over you and your loved ones, and we hope that you will join us again in worship next Sunday. Your announcer has been Sam Turner. receive the blessing and now go in peace and the good Lord will be with you always in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You all receive the blessing, this wonderful blessing. You all go in peace. And the good Lord will be with you all in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.
God's life for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. You take and drink. This is the true blood of Christ, our Lord and Savior, shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Take and drink the blood of Jesus. Amen. As you all receive the blessing, and now go in peace. And the good Lord will be with you all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As you all receive the blessing, now go in peace, and the good Lord will be with you all, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
you all receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. You may be seated. I just have a, a couple quick announcements. First of all, <clears throat> Beth, my wife, asked me to announce that last week she put out uh, the May prayer list by the entry door. Later, she noticed that she had several addresses wrong and had ha omitted others. She had a little trouble with copying and pasting, and she apologizes and wants to be sure uh, you have a corrected copy as we have so many on our prayer list right now, and many would appreciate the support or encouragement and or a card. And so the, the new renewed list is there now. A couple other things. As probably most of you know, our sister congregation in Jefferson City, Trinity Lutheran Church and School, uh, suffered uh, fire and smoke damage. And uh, they... Uh, well, it's going to be a long process for them to, to, to get back. Uh, our evangelism committee uh, decided we should give them our monetary support as well as our prayers. And uh, they have started a fund. Uh, evangelism has already put in $500. And we're asking everybody to uh, uh, contribute as much as you can. Even nickels and pennies are good. There's a church out uh, in the entryway out there that uh, you can put your offerings in, and I'm sure we'll be, uh, we'll be taking these offerings for a little while. Um, June next month is going to be the 40th anniversary of this building. Don't know how many of you have been here the entire 40 years, uh, but 40 years ago, let me see, how old was I? Oh my gosh. Uh, 40 years ago, there's lots, lots has taken place in 40 years, and uh, we thought that maybe we ought to think about doing a facelift, or whatever you want to call it, a renewal of, of the church sanctuary of the entryway, the north X, and also of the basement. If you have suggestions, uh, you can either talk to me or talk to Karen Stock, who has gratefully 
uh, uh, permitted herself to be one of those uh, folks in charge of gathering information. Look around. You can see areas where 40 years have taken its toll. And we can, we can use everybody's eyes and everybody's ideas. So we would appreciate that very much. Uh, the only last thing I have is that we will be starting a new Bible class in the Martin Luther room uh, led by my wife and myself, and it'll be on First Peter. Thank you very much.